Hello there, welcome to episode 15 of How to Program in C++. Today we're going to be going some more over specifiers, uh, more specifically the short and long specifiers, and we're also going to learn how to use them as a data type. So that should be all very exciting. Now, first thing I'm going to teach you, though, is how to use the size of function. Now, this is a very standard function in C++. Uh, you can use it literally just by typing size of and then entering in the uh, argument or parameter that we want to pass in. And in this case, uh, what, you're, what you would pass into size of is either a variable or a data type. And what size of will return to you is the amount of bytes that the computer used to store that data type or variable. So uh, this is kind of useless just calling it by itself. So let's say C out and then size of and then I'm just going to open bracket and put in integer and close bracket and semicolon. And if we run this it will tell us that an integer is four bytes in size. Now, as we discussed last time, an unsigned integer, although it can hold twice the maximum value, uh, however, not a negative value, it still stores four bytes. It's still exactly the same. One other thing you can do with size of, as I was saying earlier, is you can get the size of a variable rather than just a straight data type. So if I make var uh, int var equals three, you don't have to initialize it to use it in size of. Um, type in var here and there we go. It tells us that the integer is four bytes large. Now if I put in a car here, we will just get one byte because yes, a car is only one byte, at least in this situation. If I type in a double, then we get eight bytes because an, a double precision floating point, point number <laughs> takes up eight bytes in memory. Now the, the amount of bytes is a gives you a good idea of how large a value something can store. Um, so let's get on to the specifiers part of this. The reason why I told you this size of thing is because the short and long specifiers that we're going to learn about allow you to modify how many bytes of data you want to store. Uh, let me say that in a slightly less confusing way whilst putting up an example. So. If we were to use the short specifier on our integer here, and I'm just going to get out the size of um, of that, it will half the size of the integer. Uh, because before an integer was 4, and uh, now it is only 2 bytes large. Now this means, we're going to do some copying and pasting again, that you can store any value from this number to this number. So a fairly small number by um, the standards of the data types we've been using so far. Just going to prove that really quickly. Don't worry, I'm not going to do this for all of them. Uh, but if I see out var, then you can see I can indeed store that amount. Uh, but if I put in a value any larger, it'll loop back around to negatives as I discussed last week because it tries to squeeze in that massive number and can not fit it in. Basically, short allows you to make a data type smaller. Now, short is one of the specifiers that really can only be used on integer. There may be some other data types, but I do not know of them. Uh, if you're really interested, you could do some further research on this, but short, as far as I know, uh, you can only use it on a regular integer. Okay, so let's learn about another specifier. This time it's long, and I bet you can't guess what this will do. Uh, so let's do size of integer, and then run it. And as you can see, the long is actually still the same size as an integer. That's a bit funny, isn't it? Well, the reason for this is because um, the size of the integer the regular integer just depends on what system you are compiling for. In this case, uh, well, the integer will all should be uh, the size that is most appropriate for your processor, the size that your processor can calculate with best uh, and can utilize the fastest. In this case, the most optimum size is four bytes for the integer. And it just so happens that a long int is also four bytes. Um, 
So in this case, long does absolutely nothing. However, uh, long will increase other data types. There are other data types that you can use long on. So let's try a, a long double and we'll just call it var. Actually, I may as well just get rid of this and we'll just check it in size of. So long double, as you can see, it stores 12 bytes of information, which is much more than the eight bytes that we saw before. Let me show you that again. So in general, the long specifier will allow you to increase the amount of bytes of information that you store. Now, you might be asking, why would I want to store anything other than the largest number, just in case? Why don't I just make every single number a, a long integer? Uh, it's the real reason for this is just to optimize your code. You don't want to be taking up memory where you shouldn't be. And uh, the thing about C++ is it's very much you manage the memory. So if you're writing a complex program, you want it to be as efficient as possible. So you really want to use the smallest data type that you can whilst being in the safety of knowing that you're never going to go over the size that that data type can store. And so it all gets a bit complicated. This is stuff that you probably don't need to worry about too much right now, but I'm just telling you for the future, just in case you want to program something that requires extreme optimizations. Now, let's get on to the final thing which I spoke of earlier, which is you can also use short and long as a data type all in itself. So I'm gonna, see, I don't know why I took this line away. I'm gonna see out a size of short and hit semicolon at the end of this. And as you can see, it is two bytes. Now, a short data type is just the exact same as a short int. Uh, they are just the exact same thing. Same thing goes for a long. You can use long as a data type and it will just return what you would have gotten if you'd entered in a long int. However, there is something quite interesting you can do. You can apply the specifier long to the data type long, and it will give you an 8-byte integer, which is pretty fantastic. That is one of the, the, one of the largest uh, kinds of values that you can store without making your own custom data type, and we'll get into that a while in the future. Uh, but for now, if you need to store an absolutely massive number without decimals, then long, long may be the way to go. So finally, one other thing you can do, uh, you're not going to notice any difference in the size of, uh, because of the reasons that we spoke of before, but you can, in fact, use a second uh, specifier on your data types. Uh, and in this case, it would create a unsigned long long, which would allow you to you store a ridiculously huge number. However, again, as we discussed before, it has the caveat of not being able to store negative numbers. Numbers. All right, I'm just going to quickly toss this in here in post. I forgot to mention that the only guarantees you have uh, when compiling and not knowing what system you're building for, uh, if you don't know what your compiler is going to make your data types, the only rules you have to stand by are a long long is larger or equal to a long, uh, which is larger or equal to an int, which is larger or equal to a short. So that's really the only certain, certain factors. Uh, but generally you will get the same results as I have if you are compiling for the same machine and are using the same setup that I have been using. Okay guys, that's going to do it for this episode and I will be back next time when we will proceed on with most likely functions, I think. I think we want to get back onto some kind of really meaty stuff. So thanks for watching. See you next time.